might a bit to give presentation of what I will talk about. Uh, I will tell you something about uh, non-confinement, what happens, a very big picture, so uh, not for mathematicians, but <laughs> so that you see what is expected if you confine a sample. So because the behavior changes, and uh, because there is not much time, then I'll, I will uh, roughly address also what happens if you add nanoparticles, and in this context, I will emphasize the uh, impact of uh, the disorder. <coughs> uh, and uh, you know, the whole story will be based on some characteristic lengths that you see how they enter the system. So you will learn that liquid crystals have uh, extraordinary property, they are soft, they are optic and transparent, fluid, a lot of different structures, so they are very extraordinary materials which are used in different applications. So in biological system, life would could not exist without them. You have several electro-optic applications. And uh, because uh, in liquid crystal you can uh, in fact have all uh, physics observed because you have a lot of uh, different uh, phases and structures and they are very uh, uh, emanable to experiment so that you can uh, realize experiments uh, in them. They are often used also as a test of uh, fundamental con concept of <coughs> physics. And so if you confine a liquid crystal and in addition you add some nanoparticles, you even add this complexity. And so it's a typical representative of a complex uh, system. And so uh, what I will talk about First, I will uh, address uh, severely confined liquid crystals. You will see what happens, but uh, on microscopic level, but it works rather good. If you approach the nanoscale, how, what changes, uh, how the behavior is changed in a general uh, symmetry breaking phase transition, but I will show everything from the case of chromatic liquid crystal because it is simple. But, uh, things that I will show will be general. And then, uh, in order to show some impact of uh, disorder that they use the nanoparticles, we need first to uh, review a little bit what is happening in a typical phase transition, and uh, then we will see what can nanoparticles uh, patterns can reduce, and then conclusion. Okay. And so if we have a symmetry breaking phase transition, so that you go from one phase uh, some, uh, you have uh, continuous options and then just one is selected. In continuum level you usually define all the parameter which distinguish this, this, between these uh, two phases. And this order parameter has two components. One is amplitude or a hard component. It tells you how strong uh, the phase will be formed. So how strong it will be formed and what is important to, to, to remember that in uh, this rich phase the amplitude has one value. So it, the system enforces one value. And another uh, component of all the parameter is phase. And this phase, uh, also called the uh, gauge field, it tells how the symmetry is broken. And what is important to remember that in contrast to amplitude, it has uh, a lot of different, in, uh, infinite uh, uh, possible realization. Let us see, for example, if you have isotropic thematic transition, uh, you have heard that you can introduce Q tensor for the parameter, and it has two components. One is gauge component, it tells how the symmetry is broken, because we said that in uh, Pneumatic liquid crystal, uh, pneumatic bulk phase, you have a, they should be a, a, a parallel aligned. But they could be parallel aligned in this direction. They could be here, in this direction. They be, can be in this direction. You see, you have an infinite possibility. It is a uh, gauge parameter. It tells you which uh, direction is selected. And uh, this is S, and S uh, tells the amount of fluctuation post, and, and so, and this S is uh, uniquely defined by condensation curve. We see. So similar, for example, if you have symmetric, in the symmetric eta is this uh, 
what the parameter which tells how well the layers are formed, and phi is this symmetry breaking uh, parameter which tells uh, where are the layers. So you can shift these layers up and down. Okay. And so, because they are so distinct, uh, they have uh, different, uh, they, uh, this, uh, they are different, and so they differently respond uh, on perturbation. For example, if you now face this gauge component, it usually, if, it, if the external fields are absent, it responds on available length. You see, so uh, here I enforce this orientation here, and it just goes from here to here because, in fact, all parallel directions are to This is prosmectic, so it uses the whole space. If I scale the system, the picture would be the same. However, if you have an amplitude, it is different. So, if you have some local perturbation, for some, for them, some these are defects. This is defect pneumatic, this is defect prosmectic. You see uh, the perturbation extends over short distance. So it's not this, so here you use the whole system, but here you make a short distance because these distortions are um, expensive. The system cannot afford that. It must be said that at each point the system uh, uh, in equilibrium would like to have the same value for the parameter. So different scale. Okay. And so uh, also an uh, uh, additional consequence of uh, symmetry breaking phase transition is that they have topological defects. As you hear in a previous lecture, so uh, for example, let us, uh, in this uh, topological defects, the topological defects, uh, this is uh, in gauge component, because gauge component can have different uh, orientation, it can happen that at some point they are not uniquely defined, and so this is the Etc. of the fact, and the order is perturbed, is uh, referred as core of the fact. And these defects behave as a body, and uh, the, you can assign the charge to them, which is a conserved quantity. And so, the simplest case is, for example, in two dimensions, because in this uh, in two dimensions it is just winding number. And so, if you see to the step, you see it defines something like that. You just go around, you just go around, and you surround the defect, and you count what is the reorientation of the molecule. You see it rotated to, to pi, and then the way it divides this uh, total rotation angle to, to pi, and you get the winding number. So this was is one, and this was is this one is minus one, and so they became similar as uh, electric charges in most cases. So if they have the same sign, they repel. If they have opposite sign, they would attract, and they would like to tend to annulate into the effective state. So this is just, if you want to play, I can give you after the lecture an uh, applet, uh, so that uh, here you can uh, generate different effects from one half to five to see what is the structure. And then, uh, uh, then you can uh, simulate what is the, uh, the interference texture. So you can set polarizer at the angle between polarizer, the, the refraction indices, and you see what is the pattern. So this is one defect charge one. This is a related pattern. Here are two minus, uh, minus half defects on the plus plus uh, minus half. And so this so this is uh, the director pattern, and this is the interference, interference detection. Okay, let us now confine liquid crystals and uh, 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 have a look uh, roughly what is happening if you confine the system. Because when you buy a liquid crystal, you get bulk uh, properties, but when you confine it, what you see so for, of interest for several applications, the, the properties can drastically change. So I'm talking about general, about symmetry breaking uh, phase transition, which has two components. And so I will illustrate everything on the <coughs> isotropic method, because it is uh, simplest. So uh, uh, we, let us uh, look, for example, we have to uh, find the relevant thermodynamic potential. Let us say that the volume and temperature are constant. And so the main actors are condensation term, uh, elastic term, 
some field present and you have some surface present. And so the system would then like to find usually it happens that there are some frustrations so that uh, different terms enforce something different and so this term help find a compromise and so a fair compromise is uh, fine by minimizing this uh, uh, potential and let us look at uh, these terms uh, uh, so we call isotropic nematic phase in the simplest uh, case when you don't have strong distortion you have uniaxial order this is gauge field where the symmetry is broken as the ordering. And so the first term is uh, uh, condensation term. Uh, be careful here for later, uh, you have third order of order parameters. Third uh, order, this means that transition is first order. Okay, then you have uh, guardian terms. Uh, so just in, uh, most important uh, terms I could use because I would like to uh, show you big picture. So it penalize the departures from equilibrium and then you have field and for example if this is positive then uh, the field would like to align the director field align the direction E of uh, external field and then you have uh, a surface interaction you, have, you can have different terms but I have here put just the term which is similar to the field you see it here you have you uh, enforce orientation around E, and here you uh, enforce orientation uh, 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 around this uh, small E, if V is positive. So uh, this is global field, and this is local field, but you can call, have also a also contribution. And so you see the system is very complicated. We have a lot of material constants. We have a temperature, we have extra fields and you further complicate the system by geometry and so uh, but I will show you that it is very simple very simple to uh, uh, to, uh, to predict what will happen if you combine the system for this purpose first it is it's usually sensible to introduce the characteristic lengths one is the order parameter correlation lengths which tells you if you make order or local perturbation of order parameter on which scale it recovers. The next is uh, field extrapolation length. Uh, so, for example, if you have a bulk ordering like that, and this molecule let be fixed, and then you apply it, uh, a field, for example, in this direction, and this will rent. So, this field uh, extrapolation length will tell you on what uh, distance it's roughly rent in bulk along the field. And then you have surface extrapolation length, for example, if you have, uh, this is uh, just surface without anchoring, you have molecules like that, and so if you have here, if you impose weak anchoring, have the impose orientation in this direction, so if weak anchoring the molecule will be here, but this distance DE tells you on what distance uh, if you extrapolate really uh, this uh, surface in force orientation would be realized. So, you see, there are different definitions. This is uh, inverse proportional to the E to the field. This is inversion uh, proportional to the surface interaction. In fact, localized field. So, and so these quantities can be measured. And so, in the future, we will express them all at phase transition temperature because this is the only point that uh, is special. Okay, and then uh, let us introduce uh, you know, dimensional scaling. So we we'll scale everything in terms of R. R is this characteristic confined length. If, if we have, for example, two plates of a cylinder, this characteristic length. And uh, uh, we will scale for uh, later purposes as well as order parameter with respect to a value of order, para uh, order parameter of the, of the transition. And you get the following expression. So these are dimensionless quantities, and so you see what you get. You get uh, explicit dependence of R on the cavity size, but R is also hidden here. But this is the strongest dependence. This is important, so because immediately from this picture you can know which term is important, because you know this quantity. These are material properties, so you know that. 
And so, for example, if R is very large, uh, you see, for example, if uh, let us uh, switch this term, for example, off. If R is very large, then this term, you see, you help to satisfy this term. Because if this is large, if you make small variation in this uh, uh, contribution, then you will make large changes in the printer in energy. So you should uh, satisfy the strongest uh, 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 term in the, this expansion. Let me just show first for, uh, let us first estimate the gauge component, so the director field inside. So we have gauge component if you have, uh, let us say that the, the, the field is zero, uh, the, uh, the, this condensation field does not uh, 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 contain uh, the gauge component. So it is, you are just left with elastic term and surface term. And let us suppose that you have a cavity which uh, enforces homotropic anchoring. And if this uh, uh, value is uh, small, you, you see that this is uh, small. If you make uh, here changes, it doesn't matter. So you have to listen to elastic term. So the elastic term is crucial. So for this reason, in this case, you will have uh, essentially uniform structure. On the other hand, if this is large, then you should obey this guide, not this guide. So you can forget about this guide. And so in this case, you will uh, obey the surface condition that you could realize on this structure. So it depends on the last constant. OK, let us now go to the order parameter. For the order parameter. So we, which tells you what is the pace of the system. And in this case, you will be able to add also this condensation term. And uh, uh, let us, to estimate the behavior, let us uh, replace inside uh, 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 order this quantity with average. And so we replace the order parameter with average value. And so let us roughly look. Uh, uh, so you have condensation term. You have this T is uh, scale temperature. You have a quadratic cubic square to the fourth power. So elastic term basically it gives you uh, a term proportion to S square, and this is the average distortion of the gauge field in the uh, system. You know if this uh, if frustration is realized, we said that it will be realized on the geometrically post length. So this is of order one if, if distortion is present. And then is the third which is linear with S and P, P2 is Legendre polynomial, so this is the angle between the, the director and the field. And then you have the surface, in the case that I showed this linear contribution, and this is the angle between the surface and the end. And so if you collect all those terms together, you get a very simple expression. So it started with a very complicated system that has some 10 independent quantities. And you finish with a system that is dependent just on two quantities. Just on two quantities. And so this is easily, you can compute this behavior of this system. And these quantities uh, depend on more detail, which you can uh, uh, Ignore the So this, this effective temperature, in fact, it, uh, what includes? It includes the real temperature and it includes the uh, distortion, elastic distortion. And then you have this linear, uh, uh, okay, sorry. And then you have uh, this uh, uh, linear term, unique sigma. This uh, includes this surface contribution and it includes the external fit. And so if you uh, change this uh, sigma, for example, if sigma is zero, so that you can burn, you can burn liquid crystal, you can first order transition. So when you increase the, uh, the surface contribution, either by increasing field, or see, you see by decreasing R, if you decrease R, uh, <coughs> then uh, you get uh, uh, the first order remains, but you see you get the previous, previous but when you reach the critical point, what happens, your phase transition is destroyed. So if you confine the system, just look at the field, for example, if you, uh, the surface, it destroys the phase transition. So this is expected because the 
surface to wall of ratio is increased, the surface has non-critical behavior and consequently, consequently, because it does not want to change, it kills the tendency of liquid crystals to, to change. Okay, let us go on. So, uh, so this is this expression just in uh, everything being expressed just in the two scale parameters. Phase transition is roughly one to sigma if sigma is smaller than one half. So this is a critical condition where the phase transition is lost. But if you are below, if you are below, you can estimate what is the other the temperature shift of the phase transition. So this is contribution due to. Uh, surface uh, the, the distortions, if the surface induces some distortions, uh, so it square uh, it goes one over r square and this is a contribution due to the surface is a temperature shift and uh, note uh, that here it is important uh, uh, what is the ratio of, of r uh, with respect to surface extrapolation length. If this ratio is one then, uh, uh, then this uh, distortion will be re realized if it, if, it, if it is enforced. And this is for order one. And so the temperature shift will scale as one over r squared. Uh, however, if you have if you have this regime so that r is small with respect to extrapolation length, then this will be zero, and so this uh, term will vanish. So it depends on the anchoring strength of this measure. Okay, here are just some uh, experimental results that uh, were done by uh, George Yanis and Drago uh, Kutnak, my colleagues. So this is uh, uh, ACB confined in the uh, control pore of grass. Okay, here you have also disorder, but uh, the surface is the most important as far as the uh, phase transition is concerned. So you see, here you have bulk, and here you have confined system you go down to characteristic uh, pore radius is 7,5 uh, uh, nanometers and this is the uh, isotropic pneumatic transition and you see it is this bulk and then so it is reduced, it goes down and then the phase transition is killed by severe confinement for example here is just absolute value of the temperature shift you see it is just bulk and then you or go roughly one, one over r squared here it increases and here's, here's the latent heat uh, so you have a latent heat uh, it is first order and when you gradually disappear and so the phase transition vanishes and becomes gradual so you, the surface kills the transition but in some uh, just few years ago they have observed something else if you have normal confinement they observed that instead of killing the phase transition by non-critical uh, uh, non surface behavior, they, they, they observed that instead the transition is replaced by second order revolution. So that you have the transition phase transition remains critical. What was happening? So then uh, my colleague uh, introduced this in a uh, control porous grass. For example, they were decreasing R, they went to nanometer scales so they, uh, so if you have this difference then you have first order transition if you don't have difference you have second order transition this is calorimetry measurement and so uh, they were measuring, measuring latent heat and so they see, they see that the latent heat disappeared but nevertheless the phase transition is uh, still present still present and in this case the surface phenomena uh, wet phenomena were uh, negligible pre present. So it's difficult. What might be defined? It's that not just this, uh, when you reduce the size, the surface uh, to volume uh, ratio is more and more important. Uh, also, the intrinsic properties may change. Now, when we start with uh, free energy, we said that this uh, cubic term, the cubic term gives rise to first volume color. And so you define order parameter in such a way that it <coughs> describes the departure from uh, is uh, isotropic orientation. Consequently, its trace must be zero. So this is the sign that value. So if you sum here, the trace must be zero. 
And so if you go in two dimensions, the only option is that you have uh, a Q is something like that, S minus X. It's by symmetry, not the case. So trace Q is zero. And consequently, if you have something like this, trace Q to the third power is also zero. So you get rid of this term. So if this is positive, it is expected on simple continuum picture that the phase transition will go from first order to second order. So this is expectation. Uh, so results uh, roughly show this, but uh, I know that in the results, uh, my colleagues were confining uh, uh, cylinders, so they're smaller and smaller. So you are going from three dimension to, uh, to one dimension system. So we expected that at least you could cross the two-dimensional two limit. <clears throat> okay. And that, uh, let us then add nanoparticles. But uh, let me add uh, nanoparticles and uh, I will confine just to one case when they enforce disorder because we will see uh, again some universal law. And uh, for this to understand, let us look at the kinetics of the phase transition. Do you have isotropic pneumatic? You start from isotropic and let us quench the system to pneumatic. But if you do go slowly, it will be something like that. But if you do fast phase transition, then it's a problem because the in different sides of the system, place of the system, the system will break, uh, the symmetry breaking will occur in different directions. Why? Because they don't know, they don't have time to uh, uh, according, uh, to communicate because of the fine speed of uh, information, that's all. Continuous symmetry breaking, first, fine speed of information. So this is very general phenomena in nature. And consequently, domains they fall. So this is typical experiment results, you put domains and one color means one orientation. And so domains are formed, the, 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 the corners of domains you have topological effects. And let me show you uh, the recipe how these uh, domains grow because this domain structure is expensive because at the domain walls there is a fight going on. You have two different uh, uh, orientations and this is energy, this is costly. The system would like to get rid of uh, domains. So it would like to, uh, the average scale would uh, grow uh, with time of the domains. And so how is this enabled? Let us look at some details. You see you have uh, this you have in fact two defects, one defect, uh, the project is just one, minus one, and then uh, these uh, two defects uh, attract each other and then will annulate. And when they annulate, the domain grows. So what is important that you remember that domain <coughs> growth that you observe uh, in some quenches in, in little symmetry breaking phase transition in general is in fact enabled by annulation of topological charges. And so this is uh, uh, by uh, the large polyfine obtained simulation. So this is the main row, uh, logarithmic flow, it, it, uh, log 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 logarithmic dependence, you see it is universal. It just depends on the <coughs> number of uh, spin uh, order prominent components and dimensionality. So this means that this must does not depend on microscopic text. So to make grow, why? In order that, uh, to make system cheaper. And so this uh, uh, main growth uh, has three uh, characteristic stages. This is generally see for early regime, which is characterized by exponential growth with in order parameter, in amplitude. So, so this is something like that. So at the beginning you don't see uh, the main because uh, the system fluctuates the Earth. But after the order parameter, this is uh, so-called Jurek time, uh, is uh, large enough, then the mains are visible. So uh, then the mains are visible, so when you decrease with time, you go roughly here, so you <coughs> the mains, uh, okay, the mains go from here, they are, uh, uh, go with time. And finally, uh, most of the uh, defects are late, so the, the, uh, uh, then, you, then the defects become visible, so you are talking about the uh, defect, uh, then you, the defects, uh, the structure of individual defects becomes uh, visible. Here is more detail, uh, this uh, kinetics of the quench, so this is the main size, and this is time, 
you see with time, this is the domain that I told you that grows with time on average. This, this grows with time, and so you see that uh, these branches, these branches just means that uh, large fishes uh, eat small fishes. This means that you have uh, one big domain, and in order that it grows, it must kill smaller domains. So smaller domains will gradually decay. So we just follow, and what is interesting, you see here at the beginning, you have well-defined initial domains. These are proto-domains. So these are the first visible domains. These, these are quite of interest. For example, this is by my colleague Zlatko Dutch measured by simulation. He was measuring uh, uh, these proto-domains as a function of quench time. How fast you realize this quench? So you have some scale flow. You have some scale flow. It is inversion. And this is very inversion. For example, this is predicted by uh, Jurek. Uh, so this was derived in cosmology. This was derived in cosmology because the only requirement that you need is the, uh, is the symmetry, continuous symmetry breaking and causality. And so in, uh, when you had uh, a phase transition, when you had a big bang, you had a symmetry breaking and in the Higgs field. And so they thought that there uh, you had uh, the topological defects uh, formed and their size, initial size uh, concentration of uh, uh, topological de defect is given by proto domains. And so uh, they thought uh, that this uh, might have impact on the current structure of uh, the universe uh, because if you have dense uh, profile of topological defects, you have uh, when you uh, when you have effects, there is large energy, and so they would attract mass, and so this will then uh, cause ascending of uh, nuclear growth of, of uh, uh, galaxies. But uh, then it was shown that this effect is not so important. It might contribute five percent to the current universe. Five percent. Other things are uh, dominant are quantum fluctuations. Okay, let us now add nanoparticles. And uh, nanoparticles, and uh, let us assume uh, uh, that they are, they enforce some kind of random field. So that if you say that in, uh, they are distributed homogeneously in the system and at different sides, they enforce different orientation. This can be realized, for example, if you, uh, you see, uh, you use spherical seals, so these are nanoparticles, some uh, three nanometers. And they enforce the tropic anchoring, and they form uh, they form a fractal network. Uh, uh, they are covalent bonding, and via this fractal network, they can enforce uh, random flight uh, disorder to liquid crystal. And uh, a wide orientation, uh, so uh, uh, some single orientation. Let us look just if you have uh, this case by using sim similar arguments and like that if. Uh, radius of uh, the particles more than, correlate, than uh, extrapolation length, then uh, the surface has no effect. So you will, it will not disturb the system. Order, but if this R over T is large, uh, uh, you will get a preferred direction. What is important? Important is this. You have a particle which doesn't have enforced any by itself uh, orientation of the system. But, but by interaction of the field, you can impose some direction. Let us impose that this, you have particles like this, and they are uh, connected in a, a, a fractal network, so that they impose some kind of random network. So this is uh, experimental uh, re realizable analysis. <coughs> And then we expect uh, that something like that will happen. Because previously we have seen, if we quench the system, what happens? The domains form and they grow. They grow. And it is one single length. We, said, we see that it was one single length. That if, you, if you have nanoparticles, it is expected that they will pin. They will stop the growth of the domain. And so what is the domain size? And so the main actors are the elastic energy, it would like to kill off the spatial variation. So it would like to make large domains. But uh, you have nanoparticles. Nanoparticles have a random, a randomly posed different orientation. So they would like to form small domains. So this 
two guys need to make a compromise and to define, define the <coughs> size of the mass. And let us just be, uh, repeat the story that I've done before confinement. Uh, and the only thing which is different here is now that we have nanoparticles, we have a lot of surfaces, we introduce the concentration of nanoparticles. And uh, the another thing is that uh, the, the, the scale, the characteristic of the scale of the system is no free parameter. So this is uh, this rough, uh, you get uh, this uh, free energy uh, in dimensional form, so in this guy is elastic term, uh, term, so you have distortion in the direct engage field, and this is the surface uh, contribution, the surface contribution, and this uh, P2 is the average orientation of the uh, <coughs> Of, uh, between uh, director field and surface imposing rotation in the domain oscillator. So, uh, this uh, gradient we can uh, roughly uh, approximate like that. Let us assume that we have weak perturbations of the domains, the domains are large, we need this for statistics. And because we learned that uh, if you have a gauge field that it evaluates over available space, and this P2 also involves the, uh, tip, uh, the, the, the domain length. Uh, how? Let us look at this domain. So, in domain uh, is defined as a region when you have roughly similar uh, degree of ordering. And so, you have inside these nanoparticles which are randomly oriented. This is the average distance between them. And so, this is uh, the geometry polynom, the average valley uh, within this uh, domain. You see, if you, will, you will, if you will have all orientation, if this domain will be large, then this will be zero. But if it is finite, it will go to zero as uh, 1 over square of n, n is number of this uh, random orientation. This is central limit theorem, so this is known for statistics. And you can uh, estimate this uh, number of uh, alternation in one direction. You just uh, divide psi d with the uh, separation between uh, neighboring uh, nanoparticles and D is the dimension space so if it's free then it's free and so then you just say that the system would like to find compromise uh, so that uh, elastic term and surface uh, should be comparable and out of this you get the size of the mass You see, the size of the mains scales of some effective scale, uh, uh, disorder, strength, power to 2, 4 minus d. This is famous Henri Mann argument. This was derived in magnetism, and it is uh, uh, in magnetism, it did say, tells in original that if you have what, if you have random fan uh, field disorder, any kind of, uh, uh, just weak, uh, infinitesimally, even infin infinitesimally weak, it will destroy the system, long range of system. It will destroy long range of the system, it, it will replace it with short range order, and the mains will be given by this side D. And so in our case, we can read, for example, uh, what is this disorder, uh, how this is right. Okay, but uh, this was the, the, this is one of fundamental uh, uh, laws of statistical thermodynamics for a disorder, but it was cash, questionable, because some said that instead of short range, your order you get, get was long range order. Okay, and so for example, in liquid, then uh, they were testing this in liquid crystal, because you see, you can uh, predict uh, this behavior also in liquid crystal. And so this was some paper by Bellini in which they showed that if you quench the system then uh, the system seems to have short range order and that this in remark theorem is observed. But the recent, yeah, recent students uh, show that it, uh, it is not necessary, so that it's history dependent. So that if you quench the system <coughs> then you really get short range order and so that this uh, image map behavior should be replaced, uh, be observed. But if you quench in the field, so that you have strong field, you can get completely different ordering. So the system has memory. This can be used for some kind of memorization. 
Okay, let me just conclude. Uh, so, uh, what uh, I find I want to tell you, if you uh, decrease the system size, you go, go towards nanometer. Really, if you continue this limit, but it seems to work. The system uh, can have quantity, and if you press it very much, qualitative changes. On the case, so this is, uh, and we have uh, shown this everything on the symmetry breaking phase transition. On the case of isotropic metal phase transition, and we see that uh, if the surface wetting is important, so that if surface interactions are important, then the transition is skilled because of the non critical behavior of the surface. If, however, if the surface is not so strong, it can also change the character. Why? Because you have dimensional crossover and three-dimensional, two-dimensional two system behave differently. Uh, but we have seen, uh, for example, if you uh, introduce nanoparticles, there are a lot of different effects. I, I have shown you some only one effect when they enforce some uh, disorder, and this disorder gives rise to the main structure. And this main structure can be controlled by controlling uh, domain size. But this domain structure uh, uh, depends on history, so if you change the history of the sample, you can uh, look at different uh, systems. And so, uh, what I also wanted to persuade you, that liquid crystal uh, is a very nice system when you can uh, test the uh, validity of this uh, in virtual loops and phases. Thank you very much. is linear coupled with, with the water parameter. And in this case, uh, you see that when you uh, confine the system, uh, it uh, changes the character of the phase position. For example, if you, 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 if you would have, a, if you, it, it, it would be coupled with the square of the water parameter, you will, within this continuum picture, you will get just shift of the temperature. <coughs> So these cases that I've shown uh, are, uh, are just general, general behavior, for example, in confinement based on scale. So just general uh, things with the case uh, based on uh, scale, taking into account the order parameter and the uh, gauge field, which breaks symmetry, behave uh, differently if you, if you confine them. So this was the main story. <laughs> 